Hey there, David. Great to get a score from you. And wow, what a really exciting, huge score. And, you know, how I wish that you had been able to score more. I'm just going to look at sections A and B in huge detail, and we'll just leave out that first bar of C because it's, you know, not really quite developed enough to for me to evaluate. So, um, let's start off with a few things. Um... It's, I think, just some comments. I think that you got certain things reversed. Um, I'm just going to open up document setup. You got these values reversed there. So you had a width of 420 and a height of 747, right? So for these, <clears throat> I just went in and I reversed it and I, I did a bit of optimization, but obviously not, uh, not the greatest job, right? Uh, but if I get down too much smaller in the uh, point size for the staves, then it'll be unreadable for uh, viewers, right? Just people following along. So there's going to be a little bit of, of collisions here and there, right? But I think we can all live with that. Okay, so <clears throat> there is a ton of stuff to talk about, a ton of things I think I could help you with. But um, I'm really, really glad to say that harp is not a big issue, right? So <laughs> I don't have to spend any time yakking about that, right? And uh, chimes, we will take a look at in the next page. So um, let me, before I launch into the evaluation criteria, <clears throat> let's take a look at one kind of minor issue. Okay, and that's over here. Yeah, so, so here you've got a tied, a tied grace note on the same pitch, right? So you're basically asking the player to hit this B hard just before the downbeat, right? And the same thing here, sounding B, right? So <clears throat> check out uh, some of the last... I think that like maybe two or three evaluations ago, um, the I think you you're you're number forty eight. So I think forty six or forty five. One of the entrants did a thing where they um, they swapped the positions, right? So if there was a there was if there was an instrument that had a B that could tie to it, they went to the they went to the grace note below it, so it would it would slur upwards and then downwards, right? Um, so that you wouldn't get the tie on the same pitch, which I think is a, a really good way to go. So the problem is just, you know, you're coming in, you're just asking this player to come in early, right? And that throws everybody off, right? And you're just kind of saying, well, one player, like everybody else will slur a grace note into the beat, but this one player is going to play just before the beat, right? Now, um, <clears throat> granted, there is also an entry over the past few entries where the play, where the um, orchestrator went uh, ba 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 right? So there was no tie, and I think that that sort of works, right? It, it's it's not as graceful, but yeah, you kind of, kind of don't get the slurring effect, the yump 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 kind of you know the almost strumming effect. Okay, um, now let's talk about one other thing too. Okay, and just. Mm. Okay, and that is this right here, right? So we've got, you know, everybody is kind of got um, down bow markings over <clears throat> their notes. All right, so you, you wouldn't want to do this in any case. You wouldn't want to have a down bow, down bow mark over your grace note and a down bow mark over your principal note, right? You would, um, and it's, it's a little strange, like, what is going on here? Is the E tying to the E here, or is the E meant to slur up to the B, and the B meant to slur up to the E, right? I'm, it's a little confusing the way this is scored, so you would need to sort of fix that up a little bit. And it's like in here, like, it's even stranger. Or is, or is it meant that the E is supposed to tie to the E, like I said, which you shouldn't tie a grace note like this, and then the B meant to slur up to the B, so you'd have to... You'd, you would just really need some tweaking around, all right? Okay, but <clears throat> the further issue is this, and that is, um, you know, with an accented staccato, do you want a row of down bows, 
right? Because, and plus, you know, adding grace notes to it, right? Because you have to think that it, the, the articulation of this bowing, which we could call in Italian altalone, so, you know, using the frog of the bow, amfrosch, they would say in uh, German. So using uh, the heel of the bow over and over and over again, is that really an accented staccato, right? I mean, I mean, yeah, you can get that effect, but if you're gonna get, if you're gonna really go for a good accented staccato, it doesn't really matter which direction you go. You could be going back and forth and back and forth, which probably the player would prefer. But the proper, I feel, the proper, um, if you even need one, but the proper articulation mark here is. Um, is a tenuto, right? Because it's a zooming sound. It's zoom, 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 right? Now, now here you've got like these, here you got accents and a short note and so on. All right, so so I would say, like, if you want the all down bows, then, then get rid of the accented staccato. And I would say, while you're at it, get rid of the grace note. So, I mean, you can throw a grace note into that kind of bowing, but it's just, you know, bazoom, 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 bazoom. You know, like when you, when you think about the fact that the player has to bring the bow back up in your know, fraction of a second and get ready to play a little note before the beat and go zoom into it and then do it again and again and again, I just think that it's weird. You know, it's just, I mean, it's, it's playable. It's kind of on the edge of, it's, I mean, it's playable. It's not on the edge of what's playable, but it's sort of on the edge of like what makes sense, right? It, it, it's, it, is it all that musical? I don't know if it, you know, in the, in the essence of this kind of post-romantic scoring, you know, um, something about Faya, he's almost a, he's almost, uh, a, an impressionist, right? Certainly Knights in the Gardens of Spain is impressionist and there are aspects to this piano suite, which are impressionistic. So, you know, does it really make sense in that context? I don't know. I, I don't feel like that it does, right? So if you really want your down bows in a row, get rid of the grace notes, get rid of the accented staccato, put in a tenuto mark, and fix whatever this is, this this tight E, okay? And then I think you're on the right track. Okay, <clears throat> now, <laughs> let's... Um, Let's jump into the evaluation criteria. So the first one is the pitch weight in the upper middle register of the piano being transcribed directly onto the orchestra, you know, just making everything seem very kind of high pitched, and, you know, or middle, middle to high. And that is not an issue. You are throwing in a very generous bass, just really stomping around down there, and that's really fun. Okay, so our next concern is uh, in the piano part, the thematic material repeats often, possibly sounding repetitive if orchestrated the same way throughout, right? So, I mean, <clears throat> here's the interesting thing is that you actually have two separate approaches here. It seems the same in a lot of ways, but uh, you're jumping up the octave. Like, first you start off with everything just really just pounding away, you know, kind of lower down in your lower winds and your strings and this, you know, kind of stomping around. Uh, bass right in here and then here like you're you change the bass and you throw in brass in the middle right and then you get your you get your strings and your winds out of the way and that's very very cool I don't think you need to leap the I, I think like right at this point probably the bass clarinet would be better off doubling say you know this from an octave higher or something like that or, or working alongside the I don't know. Maybe maybe the same thing with the the bassoons. Don't jump the bassoons up necessarily, but see if they can do something lower down that doesn't get blasted out of existence by the trombones. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So the question is, does this orchestration work? Well, okay. Hang on. Let me get rid of that. Okay. Yeah. So this is a. The next section is B. That was probably was just you know command R. You might have done by accident on that bar. Well, you know, um, I mean, it's very powerful scoring. And I, I mean, I, I really love the density of it, you know. Sorry, <laughs> I use the word density and immediate, immediately my mind flashes to Back to the Future. You are my density. <sighs> yeah, you know, that thing is, I, 
I'm not sure how useful the E flat clarinet is down here. Like if it's really doing anything very much special, you know, maybe you could be using it to sort of fill in the hole here. Like you've got a, you've got a bit of a gap, right? Nobody's playing, nobody's playing E below B here, right? It's just being played as a grace note. And the other parts are sort of step stepping out of the way. I think that that's where you could put your, your E flat clarinet is just playing octaves with the piccolo. Okay. And, you know, I just, you know, if, if you just really want that shoving sound, uh, then, then yeah, get rid of the grace notes, get rid of the accent of staccato, put in some tenuto, right? And this is really fun right in here. Percussion, what percussion instrument? I think you meant to say snare drum, right? Because like the default is snare drum. And if you were listening to your, uh, if you were listening to your own uh, mock-up, and it was cool with you what you were hearing, then I assume that that was intended to, to be a snare drum, right? So snare drum, cymbals, tambourine, bass drum, and so on. So that all works fine. Okay, plus timpani. Yeah, so, uh, and then here you got a buzz roll. So I, I wouldn't be throwing in a buzz roll on a concert piece like this. Um, it's, it's a different kind of a feel, you know, you're letting the drum heads, excuse me, you're letting the drum uh the drum the heads of the drumsticks the tips of the drumsticks uh bounce as you move you know as you apply them over and over back and forth between the hands right so that's a different thing than like just a standard roll so maybe you were doing this for like a like an effect just um like to, in order to hear the roll better because sometimes like buzz roll uh, the buzz roll response in some mock-up some um some sound sets is has a more satisfying sound so that actually, I think, happened with another entry. Somebody was using buzz roll all over the place, and they had forgotten to change it back to a standard, um, <clears throat> a standard kind of um, tremolo beam. Yeah, and I think you're using the plus sign over the symbols as a like just like a um, almost like to mute it or something like that. I think you could just say secco, so fortissimo secco, and then you can get rid of the plus signs. Okay, um, all right, so I love the way this is sort of digging in the dirt right here, right? But I, I think like the bassoons sort of need to stay low, and so does the bass clarinet. I don't think you should jump them up. You've got, you're basically taking this part, so maybe your lower instruments instead of just sticking to this pattern could start helping out the new pattern that is emerging and then it would like then you don't have these octaves fighting so much i mean like i understand you're in bb and then walking up right so it's sort of walking up from here but it's it's just a little weird right um i think you can so a b okay a b e b C and A kettle. C so I think you could I think you could go B C here in your in your kettles. I think that that would be cool to score. Okay. <clears throat> so now yeah, you jump up the octave. I think that that works great um in kind of like your middle winds coming in as you know higher English horn, the E flat clarinet. It's perfectly fine. See, this is what it should have been doing before. Uh the B flat clarinets, it's all good. And uh, the brass is really, really fun. No problems there. So, yeah, then you throw in some xylophone, too. Yeah. Da, da, da. I said, look at, okay, so just get rid of the slurs, right? Or put a big slur over it. Right, okay. I think this would pretty much work. Yeah, uh, just like two... Two in each hand. Yeah, it's all good. You don't need an extra slur right here. Bum 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 bum. <clears throat> yeah. Very fun. Okay, so <clears throat> here's where we start getting into problems. Okay. Um, the second concern, melodic development soaring quite high, accompaniment figures covering a wide range and so on. Alright, so like the original company accompaniment figures are you know, it's da 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 do ba da 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 we're missing that energy. Right? Um and you, so I would just say, go back to the piano score, take a look at the left hand in that section, just like the wonderful vitality of it, right? And like here you've got so many, you've got so much thickening of the melody. You've got, um, 
a, this massive unison here, which turns into octaves going forwards, and then a triple octave here. And then here you're like go, going into um, counterpoint, which is kind of fun, actually. I mean, I really love the counterpoint, especially back here. That's very cool. All right, so <clears throat> here, like, here we've got a problem, all right? You're going all the way up to D. Um, this is D above the top C of the piano, right? And here you're just suddenly leaping the octave and going to the highest D. So, so the high D, the ottava D here for your flute um, is is totally playable. It's not the most musical note. It's not the nicest note, but it's okay. Like and here, like you're keeping your strings down. You're keeping your violins from going up to a very squeaky place. That's fine. Okay. So like I, with all respect, I feel that you are reversing what needs to happen here. Okay. I think that the flutes need to be like this. Okay. And you can, flutes don't need to read ottava. Okay, so I think you can have the flutes like this, and you can have the piccolo like this. Okay, uh, and then if you want to, you could drop these two pitches, all right, just to kind of make it a little more tasteful. And then, of course, there's no need for the the E flat clarinet to have this ottava over it at all, right? It should be like this, right? And then I think that I think that that works really really well. Okay, so I'm going to reverse everything that I just did and then talk about what's the possible problem. My issue here is that not only are you going just shriekingly high, you are taking away any kind of excitement. See like here is here is where the D is. So take away the ottava. Here is the actual D that is in the piano score, right? That's the that is top D for the for the actual piano, right? That's the highest D that you can get to. And for the piano score, it's really exciting because the the pianist is taking the audience's ear way up to the you know just the highest D that it can play, right? So <clears throat> by having the piccolo play really high before there, right? And it's also true of this leading into here, which I'll talk about in a minute. By having the piccolo is the piccolo is really just kind of giving the game away, right? So there's no, like once you have had this played so high, there's really just no excitement over reaching up for that high D, right? It's taking away all of the wonderful upward momentum uh, if you, we've already heard those high notes on piccolo, right? So um, by dropping them down an octave, right, it, oops, By dropping them down an octave, it's okay. This is not the most, um, <clears throat> like, it, it's not the most audible part, but at least you get this beautiful run up to here, right? And then, as far as the flute is concerned, this is pretty much invisible, right? I was saying, oh, this might be invisible too, right? And especially if you bring up the flute, like I'm about to say, about to recommend. But, like, if you've got A2 oboes playing this right here, and then you've got E flat clarinet also playing it, then really the, the, the flutes are not going to be all that audible until they start to get to F and G, and then, you know, E, F, G, A, and so on. So, so look, what if you've got it like this, as, as I was saying, to sort of reverse what was happening before, and that way you've got the piccolo doubling the flutes, right? <clears throat> and then here you can just like, you know, do that if you want to and then have the rest of it come down or or even like this. So the piccolo is still doubling these three notes, but you've got these two in here, which are easier to play, right? Or just they're not so weird. And then, of course, yeah, E flat clarinet. Let's get rid of this ottava, right? So I feel that this is really workable, right? It just it has more... Um, you know, it, it, it maintains that beautiful curve. It doesn't give away these high Ds. Uh, it, you know, it, it all it all works really well together. And it also is is nicely supported by this kind of contrapuntal rise right in here. All right. So 
Jumping to the next part, once again, I feel you're giving the game away because, and it's even worse in this situation because you got this, you know, like here's the here's the piano score, right? It's yup up 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 up, right? It's just running up to this high E, and so like if all of this stuff is happening really high, as this is fine, but if if this part here is happening very very high, like what's the big deal about running up to E now? Right? I mean, who cares, right? Because we've already heard even higher pitches. We've heard E and F and G, right? And here you're already running up to E, so it feels like you're running up to E twice. All right, so here's my recommended change. Just drop this an octave. Erg. Right? So it doesn't matter if there's doubling here in the flute. That's fine. And then... And then here, this drop is disguised by the beautiful, perfect straight line on top. Right? So, like, it's, this, it's the other thing. It's like when you, when, you have, when you have this drop, instead of everybody running up, you feel the drop. You feel the slump in the line. Right? The only player that's not slumping... Once again, we don't need... Hang on. Yeah, okay. We don't need this over the violin part. Okay, and, and just one thing to think about, just a, a side note, like if you really are sending the players up to a, a readable E for them, right? if they're pros, then it really is underlining the consequences, right? You are going up into this territory, it has consequences. Sticking a, an ottava over it disguises those consequences for the uh, for the orchestrator, right? That like they, it's like, oh yeah, you know, I get an ottava over my right hand parts all the time in piano. I'll just go on with this and like not think about the fact that really stacking up the ledger lines like this, even if it is playable, you know, there are consequences. In this case, the consequences are like getting a kind of a screechy sound, right? And that's fine, you know, like it's okay. You've got the piccolo doubling it and everything else. But still, right? But but just look at how many instruments drop down a seventh here, right? So that drop is going to be felt like a slump, right? So you don't have that beautiful, perfect line going straight up. So back to my recommendations here. All right, so that disguises this, right? And then here, you do not have to drop down until here, right? And then that keeps things staggered, right? And then you've got this, you know, the oboes could actually, see, like, you've got, you've already got this, you've got the E-flat clarinet in here. Yeah, and then you've got another drop here in the bass clarinet and in the bassoons. So, anyways, so I'm not going to go through and fix every part, but just to let you know, try to stagger some of these, and, you know, in the case of the oboes, so you can go all the way up to that E with no problem at all, right? And yeah, best to drop the. I mean, well, you know, like the English horn could run up to the to that B, no problem, right? There's there's almost no need, right? Here I said I wasn't going to do it, and I'm doing it. So you could th easily throw in that B. Get rid of that. Um, that works, right? And uh, here you've got. Your two clarinets in B flat. This could that the you know running up to that high F is possible, right? And as for the bass clarinet and and so on, like you know what you, what you could do here is this this right, right? And then it's it's you know it's all kind of more in a straight line. So anyway, so just I know I'm just sort of chopping the heck out of your piece, and I really apologize for that. Um, but, you know, at least you're not sending your trumpet up to high E, right? <laughs> okay, so um, so I, I just think it's really, really fun. And I and I love the, you know, I love like how you're kind of pounding away at this B down here and, you know, and, the, and the bass. It's very, very stompy scoring, but it's still very, very fun. And I, I love the way that the the bassoons and the brass are doing the ya-bam-ba-bam thing right in here. That's so cool. Um, it just really gives us some, some vitality, the bass clarinet in there as well, and so on. So, you know, so like if you're going to have this sort of leaping scoring in here, yeah, da, 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 you know, why can't we have the stuff happening right in here um, that is in the original left hand, right? So I, I challenge you, David, to go and put it back in. All right. <clears throat> and now uh, let's get to this part right in here. So there's a concern 
in my evaluation criteria. Upper middle register continues on relentless, if no textural contrast to the previous passage. And, you know, you, you do have a textural contrast, right? Now, one thing that I would say to, like, to really maintain that, put this guy in. Okay, so you're everybody's running up and then dropping down, e, 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 because like where is the where does the next phrase start? It starts here. Oh. Yeah, you get rid of this stuff, All right? And especially here, you don't need it. Here, I would say, hang on a second. This is weird. So. Oh, I see what's going on. So this was meant to be, right. Okay, so that is, that should go like this, totally readable. And as far as this is concerned, I would say, do this. Boom. Okay, so that solves that problem. And then right here, you can go back to base clef right, if you want to, or you can go there. No, that's all right. It's too much fiddling around. So yeah, so you can just throw that in there or even put in a treble clef, some, some cellists prefer. Okay, <clears throat> so let me get back to this. All right, so, um, so yeah, so just make sure that you're going you know, yeah, da, 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 and then two, three, one, two and three and one, two and three and one, two and three and one. So you probably wouldn't want this, this here, right? So like you don't, it's not like you're going one, two, three, one, two and three and one, two and three and one. It's really one, two, three, one, two and three and one, two and three and one, two and three and, right? So it's, so I would say like you don't, don't feel obligated to do this kind of thing, right? It's more this this is more in character, right? Making these into a little group that plays across the bar line. Anyways, um, yeah, still really fun though. I love the, I love the brass in here, the energy of it, and yeah, just in like the yeah, dun, dun dun dun. That's very cool coming from English horn and second bassoon, middle strings. Very very nice. Yeah. So um, before. I go on to this next part, which is really delightful. I just want to say just a general thing. Do you notice how just like you have got, like if there's a relentless thing about these first 16 bars, it is double bass and low brass all the way, fortissimo, the whole thing, right? So, so you know, and contra bassoon, right? So you have got a heavy footprint at the beginning. So, so think about, you know, like if you're going to come in lighter, lightweight, more lightweight here, could you cut the contra and the double bass, right? And then just gradually introduce it here or maybe just hold off on it till you get to here, right? Or maybe just have it start to come in right here. You know, and then maybe when you get to here, you could reduce the weight a little bit somehow, right? So, so just, you know, it's just some options to think about. And then we get to yeah da, 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 and this is so cool, like then you have like these, <laughs> like you have the entrance, and then you have the next entrance, and the next entrance on top of that, just awesome. Okay, um, so fortissimo diminuendo, and then what happens here, right? And same thing, fortissimo diminuendo here, but not here, right? So what is the what are the dynamics of all of these entrances? You have to think about it because like the pizzicato is not going to play itself, right? It needs to know, like the players need to know how loud they are going to be. Especially like since on the next uh, page you have like mezzo forte and forte dynamics coming in. So let's take a look at that next page. Okay, and very cool stuff happening here. We've got horns and we've got the strings. So I would say like this will all... This will be all about the horns here, right? Don't sing that song in your mind right now. This will be all about the horns right here. And, um, you know, like if you just want some support for your strings right in here, then, then score this piano, right? And then you'll have a better blend. And the same thing here, just like piano. 
supporting this. But I, I really love how you are fulfilling some of the problems right in here. You know, contrast of color, breadth of texture, uh, many, maintaining differentiated roles in closely spaced melodies, overlapping accompaniment figures, highlighting inner voices. I think you've got it all going on in here. Um, you know, you've got some pizzicato lines, and, and you've got this other stuff. So, so the thing that I always say to to, to remember right in here. So even though like the hands divide like left hand and then the right hand, like there's a division between the hands, it, it does not mean that these are separate ideas, right? I don't, I don't know why this, yeah, so this says divisi. That should be over here, I guess, right? Okay, so um, it, this should be one smooth line. Yup, up, 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 right? So if you really want this to be a smooth trade-off, then you should have, like, uh, maybe this should be A, right? Right, da-da-da, dun-dun, trade-off, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. I think it's a smoother way of doing this, right? And then, um, you know, same thing, like, bassoon to clarinet could play that sounding A, and so on. So, so yeah, so try to <clears throat> try to make it more about like one thing. So I, I've, I've seen some people score cello just going all the way across, right? Going all the way up to the G and coming back. So that, that's, that's one way possibly. Or even bassoon going all the way up to the G. But I mean, it's neat, you know, like the, the, the problem with bringing in oboe and, <clears throat> and violin is that you're underlining the fact that you have broken these things in two, right? So if you were to like maybe come in earlier, you know, da 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 bum 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 right, you know, like um just just go E A, right? Rest E A bum 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 and same thing like uh here in these you know just end here on this sixth and just like on a on an eighth note incoming e a da 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 I think it just has a smoother line all the way across. Yeah and I know you're kind of doing this pizzicato right in here but like and I'm kind of wondering so you're starting off pizzicato and then you're continuing on arco. So did you forget to put pizzicato here maybe? And then back to arco? I'm I'm just a little confused. Right? And then like and then here we're going back to this and so is this still pizzicato? And then you say arco here. So I don't know, I'm just a little confused about this now. And then Arco here, right? And it was pizzicato before, right, okay. But then why does it say pizz... I don't know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just a little confused. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna pull the screen back. Yeah, so it all, was all pizzicato. Yeah, so I guess, so you, you marked this pizzicato again, so that just threw me off. So it's all pizzicato, apologies. Yeah, so... I think that that is cool. So, like, once again, come on, come in on EA, right? So don't make it just really broken in half like that. And then the same thing here, right? Try to connect it all. And if you're going to trade off between instruments, have some option like this, right? And then, and then, of course, with the horns, right? I absolutely, mark these piano, right? if you want a good blend here, because otherwise I think they, they will tend to play over the violins, especially going up to E and F here. Ah, two. Okay, <clears throat> and then here, if you want to have a, a nice match of articulation to the pizzicato here, then you should mark your bassoon staccato. And in fact, I would say like anything that is going to double the pizzicato, if you really want that same kind of punch, then just make sure that it's that it's all got a staccato on it. Now, maybe not these accents, right? That's fine. They can just be what they are. So, like, the next question is the high interjecting notes, you know, da, 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 e, right? And you keep that from being too high at first, and that's cool. And yeah, da, 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 blink. That's really nicely done. And then the next one, bum, 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 ba, da, da, dum. and then the little E coming right in the middle of that. And yeah, it's all good. Like you're, you're, you're underplaying it. And that's, that's, that's the way to do it, I feel.
And then finally, we kind of end with these thirds interjecting themselves. And that's all fine pizzicato. That works for me. Okay, so the next question. I'm really just spending extra time on all of these sections. I just really want you to get the time out of this. You know, you as a supporter at this level, you know, you should be getting at least 40 minutes out of this, even if you're giving me only two sections, right? So let's go into this next section. All right. Um, our, you know, our next question here is um, keeping the triplets from overwhelming the melodic line above and widely reaching left hand patterns and widely reaching left hand patterns. So I think in terms of the widely ranging left hand patterns, uh, you know, that's that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm a little uncertain about this if you mean, because like the Arco is down here and the Divisia is up here, whether or not you intend this to continue on um, Pizzicato above and Arco below on these really, really low pitches. And, and I'm a little unsure about you know what we've got here in the contra we've got these you know really long low tones but we've got g natural kind of rolling along here in the timpani i guess maybe you just sort of sort of wanted if i'm correct you sort of wanted a uh, like a neutral pitch to sort of rumble along and so on so um i feel okay that that there's a possibility that this approach with the kind of low pedal tone is possibly obscuring part of the music in here, right? Because it's like this, you know, I can't really hear the the accent at the end of the bar, right? I just, I'm not really hearing that boom, right? Maybe you could use, like, instead of using the timpani to just roll along here, you could be going boom, right? Right at the very end to match these, or you could have like maybe a little tuba, tuba staccato note bonk, you know, or like or a little, like a soft accent on low E. But, you know, I mean, more or less, the, 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 the pattern is okay, right? As it's scored, it just needs to be stronger. And like, like you're using your bassoons, your, your natural allies, bassoons or bass clarinets, they are all tied up in this triplet pattern, right? So, so it seems to me that like we're we're kind of at a disadvantage here. I mean, some of it could be played say by, you know, you could be do doing some doubling with your trombones and tuba, as I just mentioned. Um, that could help a little bit. Or you could be progressing the texture, right? You know, starting with pizzicato basses and progressing to pizzicato basses plus um, <clears throat> plus lower winds, and then going from there to lower winds plus lower brass, and then just ending on pizzicato basses again. Right, there's there are ways that you could be or you could be bringing in since everything's so soft you could be giving a bigger role to the harp than just sort of playing these um these low octaves and fifths the chimes is a cool idea but they're not really loud enough to make any difference right so like you can barely hear them in the mock-up and that will be true in practice right the soft chime is not really adding a lot and i mean i think that you intend this to sort of take the to, to play a melodic role, right? Because because the melody is very, very suppressed here. You know, one, one of the concern about keeping the triplets from overwhelming the melodic line, the problem is that there's very little in the way of that, you know, E, or it actually starts off on a B, then E, 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 G, F, E, right? So, so I just feel like there needs to be more melody here. I just really need to hear that, right? I mean, and it's really lovely that you're bringing in these these other winds, um, and, and you know, I mean, how creepy is that? The um, E flat clarinet <laughs> playing Shalomo, right? Um, you know, that that is that is a cool idea. Um, very very you know, kind of awesomely scary sound. Okay, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I just sort of feel they just. The melody needs a stronger role here, and you need to lighten up on these triplets, right? I think that I think it would be sufficient just to have like, say, maybe clarinets and first bassoon, right? And then the second bassoon and the bass clarinet could be trading off or cooperating with. 
bum, 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 bum. and then you could keep your pedal right in here, but like I would just tone it down to pianissimo, right? So pianissimo on the pedal tones, right? And then um, and then piano on the accompaniment figures. And then I think that's the way to go forward with this, right? And just and just you know maybe just not have so much weight on the triplets. And then I think you are you've got the problem solved right in here. It is it is a really cool idea. So you notice that I'm not telling you that your texture is wrong or it doesn't work or anything like that. You know whatever it is about this that 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 appeals to you, I want that to be stronger, right? I want I want you to be able to um, to make it work for an orchestra, right? So that would be how I would take the conception that you've got here and and make it more secure, right? So that like it'll you know, you listen to it and you say, wow, you know, I can, now I can hear the melody and the triplets aren't dominating and the, you know, my idea of the pedal bass is working really well and I really like the way that this comes in and it pushes into the music and so on and so forth, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I like the idea of the chimes, all right, to so just, I would just start off, you know, B, E, E, you know, and, and, and have the chimes be a little louder, right? And then you know here, if you're going to mezzo piano here, then I think that, with all respect, that, that it should blend together, right? So, so the the um, this should be like mezzo forte. And if you actually look at the piano score, you see that um, I have done parentheses mezzo forte because what happens afterwards is mezzo forte, right? So I'm starting you off at least by the second bar, if not the first bar, at a mezzo forte. Right? And, and also think about the implications of yeah, bu -bu 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 bum does it does it connect smoothly to the triplets, right? Bum -bu -bum 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 then you're playing this A up here and this chord here, and then all of a sudden da -da -da -um. Right? So is this smoothly connecting to what's going on? Like would it be possible that you could tie this together right here and end it with like yeah da -da -dum, like within this octave? Right, from G. Um, excuse me, from from F, an octave higher, and then let go of it, and then let these instruments just take over lower. Or what if you had like clarinet and bass clarinet playing together like this, and then just you know then the bassoons could like work together to make this to firm this up. And that way you just keep this more clarinetish, and you get that very spooky sound of three clarinets working together at the same time. Well, some people would say that would be firmer and more lyrical. But I think that if you, you know, if you have ah two bassoons, excuse me, if you have ah two clarinets and they're slightly phased, and then you throw the double, excuse me, you throw the bass clarinet in there, which has a this nice uh, kind of weird character in its, um, you know, kind of going across its throat tones. Uh, from lower, from the like lower clarino to the upper shalomo. I think that that just has a, that just has a really cool sound altogether. So there's a bunch of different things you could do in here. You know, I don't know if any of them work or appeal to you or anything like that. But maybe like this, like elements of what you're doing in here will apply to some original work that you're doing, or maybe some like like if you're doing some uh, film scoring or. Or like, or game composing, or some other kind of thing, um, you know. And this, and elements of this work their way into it. Like, you know, I'm always reusing bits and pieces of things that, you know, that I've seen in a in a new original context, right? Or things that I've done that I didn't really take seriously, or that were rejected ideas, say for a film score, or were um, like sketches that I did that I kind of didn't want to pursue further and then using them in really fresh original ways that apply to something new and then you know the effort that I put into it wasn't wasted right so anyways like I just think this is a really great start David and I, I wish that you had the time to take it further and I really enjoyed it a lot and, and and I you know I appreciate the time that you were able you were able to put into it and you know, that does mean a lot and it's good to see another score from you so you know and also of course you know that i appreciate the um the support that you've given to patreon for you know for quite a while now and and just being part of the community and so on that just you know i really 
I uh, think that that's awesome. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just humbled by everybody's generosity and, and involvement in the community and making it better, you know, and just taking the initiative to help each other and stuff. So, you know, in that spirit, please, you know, give David some suggestions, some feedback, even just a nice comment about like things that you liked about his score. Or you could even contradict me and say, oh, I don't I don't agree with Thomas. I thought that part was great or whatever. Um, so, so, you know, it's all fair. Communication is the key here and helping each other and sharing resources and perspectives and experience. So, so yeah, so let's keep that going. And, uh, you know, this is actually the last of the Brev evaluations. And then I've got, um, I think I've got, is it another... 22 scores or something like after this so I'm definitely you know more than a third of the or more than two-thirds of the way through all of the scores I think and you know I'm just about to head into territory where every single evaluation will be longer than an hour and I hope people can stick with them because there's going to be some really great stuff to pull apart and look at in the scores coming up and you, you know, and just and some great insights and and so on to share with you about uh, what I you know what I thought and, and the, the insights of the orchestrators themselves, uh, as shown in their work. So stick around for that, and thank you all. Thanks, patrons, for making all this possible. Thank you, website subscribers and viewers out there. You know, leaving your likes and comments. It's all appreciated. It's all treasured. Thank you so much. And now. <laughs> On to the dotted brev evaluations. <laughs>